Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Big Lee's World's Podcast. It is I, your host, Big Lee, coming to you once again from the Boom Boom Room right here in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. And today, I am lucky to be joined via Skype by fellow podcaster of the Four Sides Podcast, Mr. Caleb Carter. Caleb, how you doing today? Well, I'm back, and I'm better than ever. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I well, believe so. I'd, that's, what I'd, that's what I'd like to say, but I mean, <laughs> I'm here. Hey, you're here and you're making it, right? Yep. Hey, that that's what I like to hear. I mean, you're still out and about making the road. I see you went down to Jackson the other day for uh for some uh, USA was it USA Championship Wrestling, not USWA. Yeah, close enough. But hey, I had to get my Thunder Rose uh, autograph on my NWA DVD. So I mean, and of course, it's always great seeing Thunder Rosa. So that was oh, yeah. kind of a no brainer. Oh yeah, such a great talent. And I think you may be the only person I know that actually bought an NWA DVD. Really? Ken, Ken Murphy doesn't own any? I don't think Ken Murphy owns a DVD because I don't think Ken Murphy knows how to work a DVD player. Ah. Love you, Ken, if you're like this. Nah. You know, you know, Ken's not putting over our podcast. He has to put over his other buddy's podcast before he puts over ours. Yeah. But yeah, hey. Maybe I that that's not what we're here to talk about today though today we're here to talk about something very special we're here to talk about that new hot uh up-and-coming wrestling company over in anna illinois the anna fight underground which just recently had their very first show the new was it the new show in town i believe is what it was called i think so yes and we were both in attendance at that and uh what'd you think over all the show well, I think overall, f- for our first show, I thought it was pretty solid. I mean, with first shows and stuff, you're going to have things that you can do better. And, I mean, there were a lot of strengths that really stuck out, though. So, I mean, I'll kind of give you my thoughts on each match as we go and stuff. But overall, I thought it was a really solid show, and I can't wait for the next one. So, let let's talk about the big thing right out of the gate. How good did it feel to walk in the door and see Big Lee at the ticket booth? Ah, oh, man, it was like good time. It was like good old times. I know, right? If you ever wonder, like, the top reason that you need to go to an Anna Fight Underground show is because when you walk in the door, you get to see Big Lee from Big Lee's World. That's right. When are we going to get that Big Lee VIP package? Hey, you know the next show, December 17th, back in Anna, is the Big Lee's birthday bash, so... Yeah, you know, we could probably make that work. Yeah, we'll have to talk to so and so about that. Whoever the whoever the owner of Anna Fight Underground is, the big boss. The big boss. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I was allowed to say his name or not, but I, I mean, we did a podcast episode together, so I think the people who are listening to this probably know that it's Zach. If you don't know who Zach is, that's all we're saying. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll talk to Zach about it then. Right. That's all I'm sure, I'm sure everybody's waiting to get that Big Lee's World autograph and photo op. Hey, I got a Big Lee autograph, actually, on the Super Show poster that I made a while back. That's right. That one that you got big time doing, but I guess we're not going to talk about that either. Ah, uh, no. I mean, <laughs> Anna. Talk about, right. talk about Anna. <laughs> I was going to say, I signed an autograph for somebody at that show. I don't remember who it was. I know just whoever whoever it was that asked it caught me off guard, but I, I signed. Do what? I think it was a full. I think it was a few people actually. I think me, Noah Hudson, and uh, some other people probably there at Comic Con. No, like I signed somebody's. I think I signed somebody's chair. Oh, oh, what Anna? Yeah. Dang. Yeah, somebody came up and was like. But you signed this. I'm like, uh, sure. I mean, oh, well, if you want the autograph of your favorite ticket taker, sure. I mean, that that guy reminds me of one time I was up at Glory Pro and some random girl came up, was like, hey, can you take a picture with us? Because I was just hanging around gimmicks afterwards. And I was like, I mean, I'm not special, but I'll take a picture with you, sure. Look at that. Look at that. Superstar. Superstar. Big you time. Put that, you need to put that in your Tinder bio. Ah, so I yes, mean, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, let, let's get to it here. Uh, so you walk in after your great experience of seeing Big Lee at the ticket uh, 
box office. There was two meet and greets that happened. There was a New Jack meet and greet and a Nick Gage meet and greet. Did you do either of the meet and greets? Uh, yeah, I did the New Jack one. I mean, I mean, New Jack kind of seemed pretty cool. I mean, I didn't. I honestly, besides ECW and stuff and hearing about them, I don't know a super whole lot about New Jack, so there wasn't really a whole lot I talked to him about. But I mean, just being able to meet New Jack was mm-hmm. pretty cool because that's like it's like one I never thought I'd be able to meet ever, just because uh, his reputation, I guess, or if anybody would have the balls to book him. <laughs> But yeah, it was cool meeting New Jack. Uh, I didn't, I didn't buy the Nick Gage meet and greet, but just because I've met Nick Gage like probably five or six times already, but uh, that was that was an interesting experience. I think, uh, I think Nick Gage was enjoying some of the uh, the Southern Illinois spinach a little bit, and that yeah. definitely, definitely influenced. The meet and greet experience, but I mean, yeah, I mean, Nick's, everybody Nick's, likes to have a good time at the Anna Fight Underground, even including Gage. He had a good time while he was there for oh, the most yes. part. Oh, yes, he did. <laughs> yes, but, he um, did. so yeah, when it comes to New Jack, uh, I had went outside to uh, kind of get kind of gather the people that were having the meet and greet and early entry and all that. And uh, for those of you that didn't make the show, there's like a bar, like not far down the street from the venue. And uh, as I'm standing out there talking, it's like you see New Jack walk out of the bar towards the venue. And everybody just like sees him standing in line, just looking like, oh, it's, it's New Jack. And a couple people just kind of put their fist out. And without even flinching, he just walks by, fist bumps, keeps going. <laughs> so I was like, okay. I see how this is going. Yeah. So yeah, we had a uh, new Jack. New Jack was a trip. I'll, I'll say that I, I'm a big new Jack fan. Of course, you know, I'm significantly older than you. So I enjoyed uh new Jack's time in ECW XPW and even his stint in TNA. And uh, it was pretty cool to like get to get to see him in person. And we'll kind of get into some of the details of all of that, but overall, uh, it was an interesting experience to say the least, but uh, so yeah. After that, uh, one thing that I really did liked about the Anna Fight Underground is there's a pre-show. So uh, one of those things, like you know, a lot of companies out there they have a pre-show, kind of get the crowd warmed up before uh, the main card. And uh, how was your experience with the uh, pre-show? Well, I mean, I think it's awesome that. I think it's awesome any time that a uh, wrestling promotion puts on a pre-show match because just kind of now let me say this in a nice way. I guess kind of to give newer guys a platform without them having to fall flat on their faces. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, most definitely. So uh it I think it was a it was a Stride Pro Wrestling Legacy Championship match. Uh B Rad, that's his name. B Rad against uh, Savion Ayers. That is his name. Okay. Yeah, it was a pretty decent pre show match. I mean, it wasn't like, it wasn't nothing that blew me away or nothing, but I mean, it's just, like I said, it's just so always good to see guys that are still working to improve themselves get a shot like that. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, it, you know it's one of those things that it, it kind of pays it forward, you know. Those guys that show up to kind of help, you know, set up the show, things like that. And uh, there's not necessarily a spot on the main card, but, you know, it gives them an opportunity to kind of, you know, us giving back to them a chance to show their craft. I mean, if you making it worthwhile for them to coming to help us. Yeah. I mean, if you look at promotions like like if you look at Glory Pro, uh, Alpha Omega, the tag team, it was Camaro Jackson and Kenny Alfonso. Uh huh. They. They did a lot of pre-show matches, uh, like they would come and help set up and tear down and stuff. And eventually, they worked themselves into the onto the main card. So, I mean, that's a good way to get yourself noticed, also. Oh yeah, most definitely. Now, during the time of the pre-show, I was up front, you know, trying to get the crowd in and get them ready by seven. Was there one match or two pre-show matches? Uh, I think I only remember there being one. Okay. 
I wasn't quite for sure. And I think right after that was when the actual show started because I think that's whenever Zach came out to do whatever he was going to originally do. And then uh, Lethal Injection, or what, what are they calling themselves now? Uh, so I know them as Lethal Injection. Yeah, me too. You know, I know some Illinois companies wanted to go call them the Mercury Brothers. But Mercury. now they're going by the uh, Skimmerhorns. The Skimmerhorns, okay. I guess that's the shoot name. Yeah, that that's really their shoot last name. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I was looking at that the other night. I was like, is that their shoot name? Damn. Yeah, but anyway, but anyways, like they came out and attacked Zach, and then uh, Mikey came out and got that pop for uh, Roscoe Eat Lisa. Yeah, for those that didn't know, uh, Roscoe Eat Lisa's been on hiatus for a little bit, and. At that last Anna Fight Underground show, uh, Roscoe Eat Lisa reunited. And the fans were quite happy about it. Yes, we were. So, thoughts on that match? Uh, I mean, it was a... I thought it was a good opener. I mean, I was kind of... I was kind of confused because, like, I thought the skin horns looked familiar. I was like, is that lethal injection or am I just seeing things? <laughs> Now you've but, seen you know, lethal... it's, it's a... now, now you had seen lethal injection work before, correct? Or the skim of horns, oh, okay. I should say. Yeah, I've seen them work as lethal injection quite okay. a few times, actually. That's why they look familiar. Mm-hmm. But anyways, it was a, it was a good opener. I thought it was good to see Roscoe eat Lisa back. That's just kind of a it's a good way to open the show, you know? Right, exactly, and. uh you know, it's one of those things like I enjoy having Roscoe Eat Lisa on the card, you know, going forward to this next show coming up December 17th back in Anna. Um, I'm really excited to have them b- back there, and I'm exactly I'm excited to have them on the actual card. So I get tongue tied right. here because on my back end of it here, I know having Roscoe Eat Lisa on the bill sells tickets. Oh, yeah. And it gets the fans excited for it. And a lot of feedback that we've had for this show coming up that's been announced for December 17th is people are really excited that they know ahead of time that Roscoe Eat Lisa is back. You know, yeah. Mikey has been tearing it up on the indies for years. And, you know, Zach had a little bit of a break there. And now that Zach Sawyer is back in the game, a lot of people are excited for that reunion. Oh, yeah. I mean, Roscoe Eat Lisa was easily one of the most over tag teams and. In- Maybe not the, not just the mid south, but probably the entire Midwest. Honestly. Oh yeah, most definitely. And then I think you can actually even go to Mikey, or hit up Mikey on Facebook or at the show, and I think he still has some of those infamous Bart Bart Gator Tit shirts. Oh yeah. I still have not picked up a Bart Bart Gator Tit shirt, but I need to. Yeah, that might be a go for me here in December. Alrighty. So overall, solid match. Now moving to the next match on the card, Tony London versus Riser. Yeah, uh that was you know, when you have an opening match and then the next match is doesn't exactly live up to the hype, but it's kind of a little slower. I mean, I appreciate kind of just a regular wrestling match, but I mean You want that blood and guts. Yeah, I want. I wanted. The, I want. I guess I was expecting more of the hardcore stuff. And uh, there was an instance in the match where uh, some fans were offering Riser a weapon because the, the event was bring your own weapons, and so will the event on December seventeenth. Uh, Riser birthday bash. Yes. Yeah. But anyways, uh, Riser said, "I don't use weapons. That's not real wrestling." So. I got. I don't know how to feel about that. What do you think, man? Anybody that knows me knows I'm a big hardcore deathmatch wrestling fan. So I hate to hear anybody disrespect the art of deathmatch wrestling, and especially somebody, some young guy like Riser, you know, talking bad about the great craft of deathmatch wrestling. I don't know how I feel about that. You know, is he trying to get that Jim Cornette heat? Like, I mean, it could be. I mean. He might really feel that way, but but anyways, 
wasn't it wasn't a bad match. It wasn't again. It wasn't one of those matches that blew me away, but mm-hmm. it is good to see young guys like Tony London get an opportunity to show what they can do and stuff. And Tony's going to be coming. Tony's going to be coming back next month, I think. Is he in? Is he in the scramble? Yeah, I think he is in the scramble. Okay, perfect, awesome. I was trying to sit here and think. I was like, I don't remember who's in the scramble. It's got like a got like a seven person scramble. A seven no. person scramble. Yeah, it's hard to think. Of, seven thousand person scramble. Seven thousand person. <laughs> yeah. So overall, you know, I think, and that's what's great about Anna Fight Underground. There's a lot of different styles of com- competition here, and uh, and I think that that can be seen with this card and the card going forward is. Uh, you know, it's, it's something for everybody. It's not just one type that, you know, isolates a whole other type of wrestling fan. Like, you go to, you're going to see a little bit of everything. And I think that's kind of what it is with Tony London versus Riser. You know, some people are going to kind of be iffy about, ah, you know, it's not a deathmatch show. Or it's not a deathmatch on a, on a hardcore deathmatch show. And I think, you know, some people aren't going to like it. Some people definitely aren't going to like the fact that Riser is uh, talking bad about deathmatch wrestling. Yeah, and hardcore wrestling, so yeah, fuck Riser. <laughs> uh oh, getting that Caleb Carter heat, that CCH. <laughs> Need to uh, make that a T-shirt. Yeah. So next up on the card, Anakin Murphy versus Satu Jin. So originally, Anakin Murphy was supposed to wrestle Zach. Not for sure, quite of what happened there, and why, you know, Zach didn't go ahead and get that match in. I'm sure it probably had something to do with the fact that he wanted to address Anakin at the beginning of the show, and then he got jumped, and Mikey was there to save him. But that led to Anakin getting a much bigger competitor in the debuting Satu Jin. Uh, what are your thoughts on Satu Jin? Uh, well, I'm going to give the match an automatic 12 stars for the awesome Maju, Majin Buu cosplay from Satu Jin. I don't know what any of those words mean. Oh, Dragon Ball Z stuff. That's there a cartoon, go. right? Yeah, anime. Yeah, okay. that's a that's a Satu Jin's uh like that's kind of how he dresses up, like Majin Buu, I guess, cuz he's got like the the white baggy pants and the belt and he's got the vest of course, but I mean besides all that, I mean, impressive dude. I actually got to Watch a little bit of the the ICW show from this past weekend. Oh, with him uh, and Casanova. Saw him in the pit. Yep, that's right. Pit Fighter X Three on IWTV. Mm. Saw him take that. Uh, <laughs> crap, I can't. I can't think of what they're called right now. But uh, it's like that metal plate that uh, gusset. Cast- yeah, gusset plates. Yeah, yeah, that looked nasty. Oh yeah, them gusset plates are rough. I remember. Uh, Bob Young, Robert Young, good friend of ours. We were down in Memphis, and he took a, and they had some fans bring your weapons matches there at the Southern Sickness Cup. And uh, he took a folding chair and he glued gusset plates for them to use on it. Ooh. I was thinking about doing that for next month. Yeah. That was not original anymore. Oh, I think you still should. Yeah. I might. Gusset. Guess it plates are always fun to see used. Now oh. I'm sure the guys that get get them used on them are probably not that, not that uh, sharing that same uh, feelings that we do. But you know, Riser probably doesn't like them either. Right? Maybe we can convince whoever Riser's working next month to hit him with one. Is he working next month? I don't think he is. I didn't see him. I don't know. There, there's a lot. There's a lot going on with that show. So yeah, maybe I'm, it was a little. Maybe it was a little too hardcore for him. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. You know, wild and crazy things happen in the Anna fight underground. Yes, they do. Anyways, Anakin Murphy. Okay, so I've been hearing a lot about this kid this over the past year or so. And uh, this was he's actually e- my... He's emo. I don't like him. Ah, I like, I like him. I mean, just because you're emo. I mean, at least he doesn't hate weapons, you know? Well, that's true. Yeah, at least he's not Riser. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, I've heard a lot of speculation about Anakin. This was my first time seeing him live. Uh, I think he lived up to the hype. There was a lot of hype going into him. Uh, he is a good worker, you know, despite 
our difference in views of the whole hardcore versus emo, but that's another subject for another day. Yeah, Anakin, uh, also, a um, quick plug here, uh, Anakin Murphy, I'm going to be doing an episode of Four Sides with him before the show in December, so uh, be on the lookout for that. You can head over to my Facebook page right now, Four Sides, uh, and you can get so fan... Blech. I can't talk tonight. You can get those fan questions in for Anakin Murphy, so just a quick plug there. That's right, and I'm sure he's going to bring up that I don't like him because he's emo and I'm hardcore. I mean, you brought up the the Otis Crowley thing a while back. That wasn't really a thing, but I mean, I don't remember what that was. Oh, that was something about me apparently apparently wanting to fight him in the parking lot or something. Oh, I think that still should happen. Maybe I could talk to C2 or Satu Jin and see if he'll fight you in a parking lot. No, thank I'm you. I'm just trying to get you booked in a parking lot, bro. Ah, oh. you know, I'm trying to get you to earn your hot dog and handshake and. So, Satu Jen, if you're listening to this, Caleb Carter from the Four Sides Podcast wants to meet you out in the parking lot December 17th. Uh, I don't, that, I don't know what you're talking about. Isn't that how the uh, Isn't that how people work the internet these days? They, uh, you know, book themselves in an angle on the internet and podcast and try to get themselves over that way. Yeah. So I'm just trying to get you over here, brother, brother, brother. I guess, I guess, I gotta get with the times. But yeah, overall, all jokes aside, it was a great match. Uh, big fan of Satu Jin. Uh, dude, dude's a great worker. You know, yes, he's able to go above and beyond, and I'm glad to have him part of the Anafite Underground family. And I'm excited to be having him back uh, in December. Yes, and the scramble. That's right. So this is this is going to be a fun one. The match before intermission. Supposed to be New Jack versus Madman Pondo. But. But. So it ended up being Bull Bronson with New Jack in his corner against Madman Pondo. So how this came about. We find out the day of the show that uh, New Jack does not feel like wrestling. And at this point, you know. You can't cancel him. You know, you have right. to you have to do something with him. And if we cancel him, you know, we're out a ton of money as far as like refunds, plane tickets, hotels, things of that nature. So the powers of be try to work with him, work with him, work with him to do some kind of, you know, even at a point of trying to do like a tag team match. And he just didn't want to work. You know, he just wanted to do the meet and greet and walk out to the ring. So luckily, good close personal friend of mine, Bull Bronson, he stepped up and he says, you know what? I'm not scared of Madman Pondo. I'll get in the ring with him. New Jack, you can come with me if you want, or you can stay in the back. I don't care. But I'm going to get out there and I'm going to go to war with uh, Madman Pondo. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah, that's a brave dude. Bull Bronson, he he's a tough dude. He don't play. Yeah. In the words from a in, in living color, homie don't play. <laughs> was it your first time seeing Bull? You know, it was actually, unless unless there was another time I seen him at Stride. I don't know. Uh, he did a couple of Stride shows. Bull's okay, I, a little Bull may be a little too extreme for Stride. Yeah, I may have seen him over there. Like, I've heard the name and stuff, but, I mean, I'll just say this is probably my first time seeing him. Say, so Bull worked a lot for uh, this company called Outlaw Wrestling up around okay. Australia. You All know, right. the company that Hooligans ran. Really great company. I wish it was still around because they did great. You know, they had a lot of great talent like Anna Fight Underground did. You know, he worked there a lot. He worked also for that. One company up in Illinois that I have heat with, apparently. So, we're no longer giving them free plugs on here. But uh, uh, he worked there for a while. And then uh, he kind of took some time off, you know. But uh, he was ready to come back and, you know, make a name for himself again. Kind of reintroduce himself to fan, newer fans that may not know who he is. And I would say he done that. 
Yeah, I would say so. So what was your thoughts on Bull versus uh, Pondo? I mean, it wasn't a long match, but it was it was hard hitting, simple and effective, kind of like a, I guess, kind of like a Goldberg versus Brock Lesnar match. I mean, it's not going to be like a. I long mean, I think ma- it was a little bit longer than that. Well, yeah, I mean, well, I'm talking about I'm talking about like WrestleMania 33 Goldberg and Lesnar. Yeah, that match was amazing. <laughs> but like, like. Madman Pondo, I wasn't expecting him to go for like 20 or 30 minutes or nothing like that. But I mean, we got blood. We got we got the good hardcore spots. So uh, the match did its job. Personally, I'm not a fan of long matches. I sat through that one Saturday, that tag team from AEW match. And uh, that was rough for me. So, I, you know, I, lo- I love a good, you know, 10 to 15 minute max match with just blood, guts, violence. And that's kind of what we got here. You know, uh, New Jack decided he did at least want to do some sort of action. So he did uh, go and, uh, you know, uh, attack uh, Bull, turned on Bull. Yeah. So, I don't know. Uh it's one of those things, you know, it was good to have New Jack on the card to help get name get our name out to people. But um, I think the big thing, like, I want people to take away from this is that, you know, originally when it was booked, when the agreement was made, plane ticket purchase, all that, uh, New Jack had agreed to wrestle. And once he got to the building, he decided he didn't want to. So, you know, we don't want anybody to feel like, you know, it was a swerve or, you know, some kind of crazy, like, just get people in there and then not follow through. You know, we worked up two doors opening, literally trying to get uh, New Jack to agree to do some sort of, like, in-ring action. And the best that we could get is what he done. So we just want the fans to know for certain that, you know, we didn't want to mislead you or strive you in any way. We just want you to know that, you know, we did everything in our power to try to get him to change his mind once again and go back to what he originally agreed with. But kind of like you said earlier, you know, it's New Jack, and that's kind of how things go sometimes. Yeah, I mean, not not all your heroes are going to be angels, unfortunately. That's true. But, uh, you know, the fans got to see him do a little bit. Of- they wanted to meet him, got to meet him. Uh, he did, you know, cut, a, cut, he cut a promo out in the ring. So people got to see New Jack, you know, it was just sad. It's not what they wanted or they had anticipated seeing. Yeah. But, you know, I think with the whole Bull Bronson thing, I think, I think like you guys did the best, the very best you could in a situation mm-hmm. like that. You know, it worked out. Oh, like yeah. They're most- going to have a uh, they're gonna have a rematch next month. They got got a story going on, so I mean, turn chicken crap into chicken salad, I guess. No. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's exactly what it is. And then also at the same time, you know, it really gets you know eyes on bull, which I've said for years. You know, before I was doing the doing my thing in Cape Girardo, like I wanted bull here. Like I'd even approached bull right as he was taking time off from the business. It's like, hey. Why don't you come over here to Cape? Let's work something with you coming here. And it just never lined out. And then uh, when I found out that at the time, I thought Bull was just going to be visiting the show, you know. And uh, I was really excited just to get to see Bull because I hadn't seen Bull face to face in a couple of years. So I was really excited for that. And then to actually get to, you know, see him back in the ring working made me really excited. But after that, it becomes everybody's favorite part of the night, intermission. Do you got any great intermission stories to tell? Uh, I mean, I got to I got to meet John Wayne Murdoch. Uh, John Wayne's great. I love John Wayne. Like, I think he follows me on Twitter, actually. So, yeah, yeah. Make sure make sure if you're not go follow uh, John Wayne on Twitter. I don't remember yeah. his Twitter handle off the top of my head. I can barely remember my own, so. Right. But, yeah, it's it great to have you. I mean, anybody that's listened to some of these past uh, podcasts I've done, anybody knows I'm big on the rejects. 
big on John Wayne Murdoch, big on Reed Bentley coming in. You know, I wanted to have them in Cape, but the powers to be, you know, seem to feel different. So hopefully, you know, the success they're having now and the success they're having over in Anna, hopefully a lot more companies start looking and see how great Murdoch and Bentley are. Oh, yeah. Uh, also, they're on intermission. I think uh, that's when I talked to Anna again, and we would talked about doing a podcast before, but we just kind of we kind of made it official there. I got you. Okay. So, so that, not a whole lot. Just kind of kick back and just let let everything sink in. Like we actually got a hardcore wrestling promotion in Southern Illinois, which is like thirty to forty five minutes away from where we live. So that's pretty awesome, dude. Exactly. It's great. Uh, you know, the only downfall of it is that, uh, you know, I do I do kind of miss just being able to drive like five minutes from the venue and being back home. Yeah, but sure. it's still a whole lot easier than having to drive from Nashville back to Cape or from Chicago to Cape just to uh, go see some great hardcore wrestling. So Nashville is such a brutal drive. I, it's not as I did the Indianapolis one the other day and that was something else. Yeah, that's one I still got on my list. What, Indianapolis? Yeah, just that area, you know. Uh, we're going next month for that ICW deal. Yeah. I got to see the chains in person. Hmm. Are they, they doing the pit again? No, it's uh, two of the no Hold bar shows. They're doing one at the Emerson Theater that Friday, and then they're doing the one at German Park, which I think may be an outdoor show. Oh, okay. But yeah, they're both the No Holds Barred show. I don't. I think they're doing the one the week after that at uh, Tremont's H two O building. They're doing. I think that's the last Pit Fighter of the year. Yeah, I think Game Changer ran at the outdoor park uh, a couple times. They did, or they ran somewhere in Indianapolis. Yeah, they did the water or not the water park, the amphitheater over the summer, and then they did the collective at the fairgrounds. Yeah, the amphitheater. That's it. Yeah, uh, you really should have went to the collective. It was a lot of fun. Oh man, I wanted to just I didn't have the money, and then the whole, you know, everything going on with the virus and everything. I just wasn't sure if I was ready to make that kind of commitment yet. Oh, understandable, dude. As soon as I got into the hotel, like I lysoled everything down multiple times. Right. So, but anyways, intermission complete. Head it back to the show. Next first match up, Frank Tell Murray versus Rockstar Cole James. That's uh, Frank Tell Murray with uh, with the analyst Robert Leach. Yes, Robert your, Leach, your favorite guy in this world, Lee. Ah, uh, he is. He's something else. Let me tell you. <laughs> I love Rob for real, though. I got to talk to him a little bit before the show, and I was like, man, time is dragging. It was like the longest 45 seconds of my life. Really? No, nah, I'm just giving you a hard time about him. <laughs> that dude seems cool. But a little bit, I got to talk to him. Yeah. Yeah, I seen him up at uh, Zero One and uh, Pro Wrestling Force when it was a thing. Uh-huh. So, yeah, I know, uh, I know Rob from kind of up in Springfield and Mattoon. Oh, Mattoon. I need to oh, go up to Zero One. Yeah, it's a it's just a good few hour drive. I mean, it's a it's a pretty good show. I wanted the I wanted to go to the one that they're having in November, but I mean, they only announced like a couple people in the tournament that they're having, and I was like, okay, if they if they announce Otis Crowley again, or if they announce Rain Victoria, I'll go. And then they announce they put out the poster, and Rain Victoria's right on the front, and with the post, it says tickets are sold out. I'm like, great. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I think that. what they're only running like 20 or 30 people in the building, probably. I think 25 right now is what I'm hearing. Because I know I miss going to the one with Otis because tickets were sold out. Right. Although, yeah, really, was... I'm sure I'm sure I probably could, you know, try to pull rank somewhere and been like, hey, I need a ticket. Yeah. But. That's neither here nor there. That's another story for another day. But back to Frank Tell Murray versus Rockstar Cole James. You know either two of these people? Uh, I can't say I do. So, 
Frank Tell Murray, I had been introduced to uh, through a chat. And uh, from what I understand, you know, he's been in the business for a while. He took kind of like Zach and Bull. He kind of took some time off and now he's coming back to the business. All right. And then uh, Rockstar Cole James. This is an interesting one. Mm. So if you listen to, uh, I believe it was the episode I did with Cash back in October. You know, we kind of we talk a little bit and kind of refer to as the ghost of Cole James. And kind of talk about, you know, some experiences that uh, they had with Cole in their times of in that Illinois company and uh, on the road. And then, um, you know, now uh, Cole is having a... Uh, I, I guess the word would be uh, a, a career turn, I guess would be the right way to say it, because, uh, you know, Cole also wrestles as Nikki Driftwood. Okay, I think I've heard that. I think I've heard that name. Yeah, so uh, I think she's starting to do customs with uh, Liberty Pro, and uh, you know, I think she did some work with Stride as well. Okay. And then... Uh, Sometime at that other Illinois place. Uh, the the one that the one we don't talk about, right? Yeah, the one we got heat at. Oh you know? yeah. Well, yeah. I mean heat. I guess we both have heat there now. Yeah, I mean, uh I've heard their their new ring announcer doesn't really care for me that much. I mean I was gonna say, you know, you got you got heat with their I didn't even know that that person was the ring announcer, so Okay, so I so said like I looked at the vi- a video that uh I think Trent Daniels posted it. It was him attacking a referee or something like that. Uh-huh. It was Jerry. He attacked Jerry. And I seen uh I seen him You mean no show Jerry? Jerry that no showed the last event because he said his back hurt. Hey man, back problems are serious now. He could have put an ice pack on in between matches. Uh sure, maybe. But anyways, I seen him in the background, and I was like, "Okay, what's he doing with the microphone? Is he are they turning him into a manager or something?" But mm-hmm. then I and then I went and looked back, and he was a ring announcer. So I was like, "Okay, I don't feel so bad now." <laughs> so yeah, you know, welcome to the wrestling business. Welcome to having heat, brother, brother. Oh, heat. But uh, anyways, so yeah, Nikki Cole wrestled there. So uh, I'm not for sure really what's going on here with the Anna Fight Underground in this. Like, uh, I, I don't know if we're going to stay as Cole James, if we're going to wrestle as Nikki, or what what's going on here with this. But uh, this match, uh, you know, it kind of started out after intermission. Uh, it got a whole lot better when good close personal friend of mine, Bull Bronson, came out there. Yeah. And uh, Bull was kind of upset. He wasn't going to put up with this anymore, and he wanted to address uh, what happened with Pondo. And, you know, Pondo uh, kind of got, you know, kind of got called out by uh, by Bull. Bull, uh, you know, Bull lost my train of thought there. That's what happens, you know. Bull, uh, you know, kind of laid into Pondo about it, and, uh, you know, then Jack got the mic and Jack cut a promo talking about coming back in December, which I could tell you Jack's not coming back in December. <laughs> no, no, God, no. I what that was one of the things that stuck out to me watching it back on IWTV. For which of y'all listening to this and want to see the show, you can actually go to uh, IWTV Independent Wrestling TV and you can watch our debut event there. Uh, if you don't have a subscription with IWTV, uh, you can use the code capital F capital U capital A capital N capital N capital N capital A. I think it's right. Cap. So it spells out F U Anna. You can use that for a five free day trial of IWTV. So if you're wanting to check us out and you don't have an IWTV subscription, make sure you go and use that code and get you five free days. But uh, yeah, Jack, Jack, go ahead. Wait, F U Anna. Yeah. Are they, are they trying to tell us something or did, did riser make that code? 
It could be 50 50. Huh. You know, I don't know. Maybe somebody that made that code has like a vendetta against an ex named Anna. Who knows? Yeah, maybe. I probably, that uh, might have been me. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it probably was. But, anyways. <laughs> So Jack cut this promo about trying to come back in December. Jack's not coming back in December. But what we yep. are getting in December is a barbed wire boards match between yes. uh, Pondo and Bull Bronson. What are your thoughts on this? Ooh, I mean, if you thought last month was brutal, just like at the end of this show, like I was telling every, like everybody was like, or he, he, shout out to Jacob Wells. He's a, He's regular over at CCW, and I seen him there. He's and I was like, "What'd you think of the show, Jacob?" And he said it was one of the most awesome shows I've been to. And I'm like, "Well, if you thought this show was great, come back next month. You're going to be blown away again." So barbed wire boards death match, like I'm all for that. That's going to be brutal. Is it your first time seeing a bar any kind of barbed wire match in person? Oh no, I've seen barbed wire matches. I know. I be, I'm not talking about branded barbed wire. I'm talking no. about barbed wire. Well, I've seen barbed wire implemented in the matches. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. 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 So that that's going to be a great match in itself. Uh, but going back to the uh, show last month, next match up on the card, Graham Bell versus John Wayne Murdoch. Oh, man. I almost want to call this match of the night. This match was like I had high expectations for this match because uh, John and Graham are both such amazing workers. But oh man, I I loved it so much. Like it was brutal. They used all the weapons. It was it was a great match. It was a great brutal fight. Uh, I had not seen Graham uh, a couple of matches of his I'd seen, but not too familiar. I had seen him in some couple of other places, but overall, like. My mindset of what he, like, I did not know how well, I should say how well, but how he would take doing a hardcore style match. But it was just like, as soon as he went out there, the switch was on and both of those guys killed it. And it it could easily be match of the night. Oh yeah. Graham, Graham is one of those, uh, he's one of those Jack of all trades. Like he's good at, he can do just about anything and make it look good. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, one thing that also has to be said about this, Graham versus John Wayne Murdoch is not just two brutal hard hitters going at it. It's literally also like two of the nicest people you can ever meet. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Like, I, I don't think I get I don't think enough people talk about like how nice some of these people are to like talk and communicate with. I don't think we talk about that enough in the wrestling business, and I think we should. Yeah, I think we should too. John Wayne Murdoch, I'm sure uh I'm sure Noah could tell you that like I seen them talking for probably five or ten minutes during intermission. Like it was just the fact that John Wayne and other guys would uh, not not John Wayne at the first Thanksgiving, but John Wayne Murdoch. The fact that these guys take so much time out of their schedule when they don't have to, you know, mm-hmm. to just talk to just talk to the fans and stuff like, like that speaks, that speaks big volume to me. Oh yeah. I I actually have on my wall here, uh, eight by 10 of where I got to see John in Chicago. And I remember right before he left, taking it back to the locker room and being like, Hey, I I was serious. I was wanting you to get signed this for me while I was here. And just to look like he was just like, Oh wait, you actually did get a picture of us to print it out to get signed and hung on the wall. It's like, yeah. So, like I said, it's, uh, you know, he, he's a great guy to have, and I'm glad to have him, like I said, like most of these people on here, like really excited to have them as part of the Anna Fight Underground family. Oh, yeah, we got a great roster. Oh, yeah, like one of the top, ro- honestly, not just, you know, the top roster in Illinois, like I would put our roster against many of these companies running today. Sure, like, yeah. Like we have, a, you know, we have a great mixture of new guys, veterans, you know, real up and comers, and I mean, we got John Wayne, the number one deathmatch wrestler in America. Yeah. So. And Nick Gage was there too. He was doing, he was doing awesome commentary. Go back and 
watch the replay and his commentary during this match is just priceless. It's amazing. Oh yeah. Like that, that's great about Gage being there and doing the commentary on some of these matches is like, you know, he gets there and he's like a fan, like, yeah. And, and yeah. he's not like a cookie cutter fan to where he's like, Oh, this is a good guy. This is a bad guy. Like he's there. He wants to see nobody phoning it in. He wants to see everybody as violent as possible. Yeah. So with that being said, a little switch up here. Uh, next match on the card, I guess you would almost call this a semi-main. Stonewall versus Ray Waddell. Yeah, I mean, this was. I thought this was a good match, too. I mean, it wasn't hardcore or nothing, but, I mean, I think Stonewall was the, the heel in this match, and they just kind of, this is one of those matches where they just kind of played off the crowd psychology a lot. And was it your first time seeing these two? Uh, yeah, I believe so. I've never heard these guys, but I mean, they both, they both impressed me. Yeah, they, uh, both of those guys are kind of, you know, more known for their time over in a WWA. They kind of oh. run over in Kentucky and Evansville. Oh, okay. I had seen yeah. these guys one other time. We would went over there to uh, go see one of their shows that they had brought Sandman and Just Incredible. And uh, it was our first time there seeing Waddell and Stonewall. So it was definitely an interesting match. You know, I think it kind of leveled things out with, uh, you know, a lot of hardcore, and which we'll get into in the next match. But it kind of seemed like a happy medium before yeah. what was getting ready to happen. Sure. I mean, it's always good. To, I mean, you don't just want to stack hardcore match on top of hardcore match and I mean, you got to, like you said, you got to have a good mix of everything. Right. Although if it was just for me, like in every match would be blood, guts, fingers, and toes. <laughs> uh, of course, yeah. And and no riser. I, like I said, I don't know. I didn't hear him say it. I don't have beef with the kid. I, you know, I'd seen him, you know, at his time over in CCW. And then, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it does bring a little heat if you, uh, if you want to talk bad about the art of deathmatch wrestling, so I'm just mad. I'm just mad. I, I'm so mad I can't talk right now. I'm just <laughs> mad. He I'm just mad because he don't use weapons. He doesn't right. use weapons. Not real wrestling. <laughs> right, Jim Cornette Jr. over there. Right. All right. So speaking of this, because I'm sure if Jim Cornette watched this main event, I'm sure he was just probably tickled pink watching it. <laughs> Tag Team Warfare, Cash Borden and Mickey Knuckles versus Dalton Diamond and Ty Blade. Ty motherfucking Blade. <laughs> and so uh, and uh, the CCW title made its debut on IWTV. Right. Look at that. The, the, CCW, the CCW title finally got to the streaming platform. Only because it got took over by another company. Hey. But that's probably another story for another day as well. Yeah, let's call that. Yeah, I agree with that. But, uh, so, the uncrowned CCW champion, Cash Borden and Mickey Knuckles against Dalton Diamond and Ty Blade. Tag Team Warfare. Thoughts on this? Oh, man. Just 30 minutes of absolute brutality. Like... Like, I mean, tie blade all bloodied up and stuff and looks looks so unfazed by it. Like, I didn't... So, a lot of these guys that I guess are just coming back after breaks and stuff, really know who they are and stuff. But Ty blade, uh, I was actually talking on the way back home because it was me, Noah, Big Nasty, and Paul Hester. Uh, yeah. We was like... We were talking about like just how good Ty is, like how good he is in the ring. Like that dude is sharp. So I would be honest with you, until before the show, I had not ever heard of Ty Blade. Hadn't heard of him, talked to him, didn't know anything about him. So I get to the arena, and one of the first people I actually talk to or get to meet is Ty Blade. And just talking to this guy, I'm just like, he's just a normal, nice guy. And I'm like, huh. So this is the guy Dalton Diamond picked as a tag partner. I'm like, that's kind of weird. Yeah. And then the more I started talking to him backstage, I was like, hmm, 
this guy, he may be, he may have something up his sleeve here and then get out there and see him work. Like, I'm like, oh my God. I know. Like, you'd have to be a complete idiot to drop the ball if you have Ty Blade on your team and you still can't, you still can't get the W. You'd have to be a complete idiot to mess that up. Uh, but guess who was a complete idiot and messed that up? Uh, Dalton Diamond. Yes, right? Dalton Diamond completely oh, okay. dropped the ball there. Like, he had the yep. match won. Well, Ty Blade had that match won. And something that anybody that knows Dalton will say is his ego gets in the way of good business decisions when it comes yep. to his career. And that was one of them. Yeah, I mean they could they could have had a big win right there, but I mean, like you said, Dalton Zigo kind of got in the way. He wanted to be the one to beat Cash, not Ty. So, oh yeah, most definitely. And and that's one of those things. This is like for those of you that don't know the story going into this, uh, Cash Board and Dalton Diamond. You know, they've known each other for what twelve years, I believe it was. Yeah, and, and Dalton uh, never Dalton's never beat Cash. So, the way that Dalton decides to rectify this is have tag team warfare. Pick your po- or pick your tag partners, and then, you know, Cash goes out and gets Mickey Knuckles, which is a complete legend in the business. So, if you don't know anything about Mickey Knuckles, go look her up, because she's crazy, and she will do anything it takes to get the W and hit the pay window. And yes. that was very well seen in this match. I love Mickey. Super nice person, once again. Super nice. But when it come time to do business, you know, she pulled no punches. She was ready for war. And yeah. that and that's what we got from this match. We got a legitimate war. Yes. And we did. you know, and if it wasn't for Dalton's ego, Cash and Mickey would have got the loss. You know, yeah. I love Cash to death. Cash is like a brother to me. But I think even he knows that. If it wasn't for Dalton's ego, they would have lost that match. Yeah. A shout out to that uh, that referee that took the, what was it, the thumbtack baseball bat to the head? Ooh. Yeah, I hope that dude's okay. Because he was like, because he was at ringside, like, whenever Dalton and mm-hmm. Ty were doing their thing. And, like, he just had blood coming out of his head. Like, he held himself. He was there for, like, 15 or maybe 10 or 15 minutes after that, like, like, it, like, he was just in pain. It was bad. Like, but shout out to that guy for taking that bump. Yeah, we're pretty terrible with some of these names. So if you're the ref that did that and you're listening to this, much respect. Yes. But yeah, going back to it, though, like I said, you know, it was a great match. Like, the crowd was into it. Um, you know, even on the Twitter live feed of the event on IWTV, like people were talking about how great it was, like how great it was to see Ty Blade back, you know, how great, you know, it was to see Mickey going back to the hardcore roots, uh, how great it was seeing how good cash was doing out there, making a name for himself. And they also talked about how dumb Dalton was for literally costing his team this big win at the first Anna Fight Underground event. Main event on IWTV. And Dalton Zigo, once again, runs an op- great opportunity. I guess my only complaint about the match was... You I were the only Nick Dalton Gage- Diamond fan in the ring, or in the building. Oh, oh God. But that's not what I was going to say. But I guess we just didn't really get a finish to it. Which, I mean, it was kind of a cliffhanger. I can appreciate it at the same time. But, I mean... Well, I mean, I, I kind of think that you did get a finish to it. I mean, Nick Gage came and uh, confronted Dalton Diamond. Yeah, Dalton Diamond was right in his mouth backstage. He didn't think Gage hurt him. Gage hurt him. And Dalton got scared and left. So, yeah. who's left in the ring? Gage is left I, in the ring. Mickey's left there. Cash is left there. Dalton's oh, gone. Right. Dalton ran to yeah. the back and left. So yeah. the way I, guess, I see it is Dalton just kind of forfeited. Yeah, I guess so. I guess that'd be a forfeit. On so the bad. way I see it, you know, 
Cash Cash and his team got the win and All right, Dalton yeah. Still didn't get the job done moving to year 13 and Dalton didn't get the job done. So, and with that, you know, it kind of wraps up the night there. So, overall thoughts about the show. Uh it, like I said, there's going to be things that go wrong like with New Jack and certain people uh, not being able to make it so and so and you're gonna have to make changes on the show but uh, I think Anna fight on the ground really handled it handled it really well and I thought it was a great show I really did yeah I mean everybody that was a part of that show you know did really great you know the locker room short of Dalton Diamond you know everybody was great to work with no egos no problems backstage or anything like that. Everybody was great to work with, minus yeah. your boy Dalton Diamond. Oh, I think you meant to say uh, minus Dalton Diamond and Riser. Uh, that's one of those things, even with Riser, like, you know, there was no real <laughs> issues once he got backstage. Like, you know, he he shook my hand, you know, said thanks, and he went and shook everybody else's hand and... Yeah, you know, I mean, like that he was gone. Yeah, no, nah, for real though, Riser. Like I've I've been seeing him improve and stuff, and he's made a lot of improvement over the. What's he he been wrestling for a couple years? I think now. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, he's made for real though. He's made a lot of improvement and stuff. So I mean, good for him. Like so, Riser, Caleb Carter will be waiting for you out in the parking lot. Yeah, I might actually. No, with no, a no, weapon. No, no. <laughs> with a weapon. <laughs> Damn it, Lee. Hey, that's what we're uh, here for, man. We're here to get you them bookings. You may get two hot dogs and two handshakes. Yeah, I mean, first Satu Jin and then Riser. I mean, I mean, shit, dude. I don't look at that, man. Like, I'm about to go around. I'm about to go around and ask people to be my tag team partner. <laughs> you got you got Noah there. Ah, uh, I don't know if. Uh, no offense, Noah, if you're listening, but I don't think he could take on Satu Jin. Or you got your boy Big Nasty. Eh, maybe he could get the job done. So who which one of you two clowns have sold the more t shirts, him or him or you? Uh I don't I don't know how many he sold actually. I mean I think I, I think I only sold about ten or ten or twelve of my four side shirts. Look at that. So you're well, stuck doing it. Hey, you well, don't, I, don't be the Dalton Diamond of your tag team and cause problems with him if you want him to help you against Satu Jin and uh, Riser. Right. I mean, I mean, I don't care who gets the win out of us. I mean, a win's a win, man. That's right. Get that I W, mean, get that pay window. Hell yeah. So with that being said, let's kind of take a little bit here and uh, let's look forward to that uh, December show coming up. Yeah, we got your big birthday bash. That's right, the Big Lee's birthday bash. Fans bring the weapons. Extravaganza party. I mean, let's see here. I'm trying to pull the card up now. I was too busy hyping the birthday party to actually think of the matches. But like I said, you know, the big one, uh, Madman Pondo and uh, Will Bronson in that barbed wire board match. And we talked about that one. Um, we also got, gonna, yeah. Go ahead. John Wayne Murdoch's going to be coming back uh, after he got that please come back chant. Yeah. Uh, he's he's going to be taking on Ty Blade in an exposed corners Texas bull rope match. That was a mouthful. But, hey, that's going to be. Little good. did y'all know <laughs> that John Wayne Murdoch was not going to come back until he heard those chants of please come back. And he really? was like, okay, I'm coming back now. Yeah, I mean, that's how it works, right? Yep, that that's how the, it works in this business. Yeah. But man. speaking of that as well, like, you know, you said Ty Blade Murdoch in the Exposed Corners Texas Bull Rope match. That's going to be a barn burner. Uh, oh, I'm yeah. also excited because he's bringing his family with him. You know, we're going to have all three of the rejects in the house. You know, oh, got yeah. Ray Bentley taking on another good friend of mine, Herzog. Of the Viking War Party. Is there still a Viking War Party? Uh, you know, since Warhorse kind of went off and he's doing a lot of good stuff now, uh, 
I don't know whatever happened to old Frank Wyatt, but nah. I, I seen uh, last time I seen Frank was I guess was with you when they had that Hooligans farewell match. Yeah, that was the the last Anarchy show before uh, before COVID, I think. Yeah, yeah. So it'd be good to see Herzog again, and it's always good to see Reed. Oh, I got yeah, to talk but... to him, and I got to talk to him uh, at the Collective right before their big uh, match at Paradigm Pro. So he had that. Then you got the uh, is it Holiday Chaos or Chaos Christmas or Holiday Ca- something like that. But the Holiday Horrors Death Match. I wasn't even close. I knew it was Holiday something with Graham Bell versus Mickey Knuckles. I thought you said Holiday for a second. I'm like, oh my God, Holiday's coming to Anna. That's awesome. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Zach. But uh, so I know this match was uh, this match was made as kind of a throwback to uh, Chaos Pro Wrestling that used to run in Metropolis, and it was one of their big matches around the holidays. So they kind of get to pay homage and respect to that is uh, is really good. Well, that makes me appreciate it much more. And then you got your boy, Anakin Murphy. He may die during this, but he is going one-on-one with Gary J. Oh yeah, Anakin Murphy, Gary J. That's probably gonna be uh that's probably Anakin's biggest match to date. I think he even said that himself. Probably his last match after uh, yeah, Gary gets very, done with him. Very well could be. I mean, not expecting not expecting a hardcore weapons match with this one, but I mean Gary's just another one of those hard hitting dudes. Uh Anakin Fairly new, got a lot to prove still. Uh, I think this is going to be a this is going to be a win for everybody. Uh, I, you'll get your money's worth out of that match alone. And speaking of which, a match I'm personally excited for. Good close personal friend of mine, Big Beef, is making his mm-hmm. uh, Anna Fight Underground debut against Akira, the Deathmatch Samurai. What are your mm-hmm. thoughts on Akira? Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm going to be honest. I haven't seen, like, I've seen a few Akira matches probably. Mm-hmm. I haven't really seen a lot of his work, but, you know, just hearing a lot about someone like that and getting to see them is always, always great. Like, I know Robert Young is a, he's a big Akira fan. So I, I'm pumped and I'm always, I'm always pumped to see uh, Big Beef. I uh, we love Big Beef here at the Big Lee's oh. World podcast. Oh yeah. So and we love the four sides too. That's right. So Big Beef, if you're listening to this, this is your shout out. Yeah. So make sure you deliver on December seventeenth in Anna, Illinois. Oh, he always delivers. We expect you to, you know, bring the violence towards Akira. So. Yeah, you know this uh, may be this may be his biggest this may be the biggest match of his career too, kind of like uh, Anakin versus Gary being the yeah. biggest match in Anakin's life. That so. is true. Um, you know, we kind of talked about the ongoing feud here earlier, but uh, both Cash Borden and Dalton Diamond with Zoe Moore will be in the building to kind of address what happened at the last show. Yeah, and uh. I don't know. What do you think will happen with this here? What happened with this? What do you think will happen with this here? Like, oh, what do I think will happen? Oh, uh, well, I think, I think what could possibly happen is Dalton will call out Cash and just kind of. I think eventually down the road we're going to get a Dalton Diamond versus Cash Borden match with. With no tie blade, no Mickey Knuckles, it'll just be Dalton and Cash, like it should be, in Dalton's eyes. I mean, it's one of those things, like, I'll be honest with the people listening, uh, when it came down to, uh, you know, working with the owners and stuff about picking this card and picking the people I wanted to be on it for the birthday bash, I explicitly said, we need to have Dalton banned from the building after what he did at that last show. And uh, 
I was told that due to contractual obligations with Dalton Diamond and the Anna Fight Underground, he had to be on the card. Yeah. So I told the owners, I was like, y'all need to let me start looking over these contracts before you sign them with these people. <laughs> uh, can't win them all, Lee. Can't win I them know. All. You know, legal actions, man. They take the bet. They get the best of you sometimes. Yeah, but eventually, I think because you gotta think Dalton Diamond wants that win over Cash Borden really bad, and mm -hmm. I guess he kind of, I guess he blames Ty Blade for not getting it last month, even though he kind of ran away, you know. So right. Think, yeah. I think he eventually didn't want it bad enough, or he wouldn't have ran away. Yeah, I think eventually uh, Dalton Diamond's just gonna kind of have that mindset where you know. I want cash one on one when I beat him. I don't want there to be any excuses. Exactly. So we also got the Billy Starks open challenge. Oh yeah, Billy Starks uh been like she's been going everywhere. I could list promotions for hours that she's mm -hmm. worked with. Space uh, Jesus, Black I believe, correct? Space Jesus, yes, that's right. Space Jesus. Or Ghost Jesus. Whichever you want to go with. Oh, I'm not familiar with that one. Oh, that's her Twitter handle, I think. You said it's Ghost Yeezus? Ghost Yeezus, yes. What's the Yeezus? Uh, you tell me. I have no idea. Must be a IFHY thing. Oh, I okay. Don't, I don't know. You young kids these days. I know. And then, of course, you know, we got the big scramble coming up as well in this match. You know, I think there's seven people in it. I know Talon is kind of being worked around and added to that. So that should be, a you know, a good, good time there for people that, you know, want some a lot of high-flying action there and that, you know, that'll definitely deliver. And Yeah, then, I know Jack Griffin's in the scramble. I seen him kind of when he was first starting out as uh, Riley McGuire. Uh, he's another one of those that's grown a lot. He's been doing mm -hmm. the – the Scenic City Invitational, and uh, seen him up at Warrior Wrestling. I think he's been doing some Black Label Pro. So okay, excited to have him in. And then our boy Satu Jin's going to be in that one as well. So yeah, so pretty excited for that. And then we got to talk about the big tag team warfare rematch of sorts, where we have the Skidahorns or Skimahorns. The Skimahorns, yes. I'm sure we're not the only ones to butcher that name here. Yeah. Going one on one, announced with the reunited Roscoe Eat Lisa with Mikey and infamous wrestling legend Zach Sawyer. Oh, yeah. So this one's going to be a barn burner for sure. Both teams now have had a couple of months to prepare for one another. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it should be a great time. And, you know, I think everybody should will enjoy that match as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, both teams work well and stuff. I mean, it was kind of a last-minute match on the 15th. Mm -hmm. But I think this time it's going to – I think this time they'll have months to just kind of study each other. And I think this match is going to bring a lot more than their match last month did. Not that their match last month wasn't good, but, I mean – I just think this is going to be, this is going to be really awesome. Oh yeah, most definitely. And then of course, to me, you know, the big highlight of it is this is Big Lee's birthday bash. Fans bring the weapons. Yep. So you know, make sure you come out, celebrate my birthday with me. I know Caleb's going to be celebrating it with me. I know oh, there's yeah. been quite a few people out there. They've already got their tickets. Tickets are selling extremely quick for this. So. Make sure you hit up fightundergroundanna.square.site and get your tickets because not just are we having this great show, we have wrestling legend the Necro Butcher coming out doing an exclusive VIP meet and greet as well at the show. You excited to meet Necro? Yeah, I am. You know, I mean, I've seen Necro Butcher kind of in CZW, Ring of Honor and stuff, so I mean... I heard he wasn't doing well for the longest time. So, I mean, I'm glad that he's coming in and stuff. I get to, we'll get to meet him and stuff. Uh, excited. Yeah. I mean, don't forget, you know, he had that, uh, you know, big role in the movie, the wrestler was Mickey Rourke as well. 
That's right. He was in The Wrestler. Yeah. Ron Killings was in that, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, so it'll be, you know, not every day you get to meet not just a wrestling legend, but a movie star as well. I know, right? <laughs> So with that being said, make sure you hit up fightundergroundanna.square.site to uh, get your tickets. Uh, you can hit up the, you know, if you need more information, hit up the Facebook at uh, Fight Underground Anna. You can hit up the Twitter and the Instagram as well. Uh, just type in Fight Underground Anna and it'll pull it up. Uh, with that being said, Caleb, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, you know, make sure everybody check out the Four Sides podcast as well. Caleb, go ahead. This is where you drop the plugs. All right. Uh, like I said, you can find me on Facebook. Uh, my Twitter and Instagram is at Four Sides IV. Um, I haven't been putting out a whole lot of episodes this past month just because just kind of a lack of stuff to talk about right now and stuff. Uh, but you can find Four Sides podcast on Spotify, Anchor, and pretty much your select pa- select podcast platforms. Uh, I always mess that up. I <laughs> uh, also heard that uh, at the Vision on December 17th, I heard the G Crew might be in the house, too. Oh, so. man, I seen the G Crew had, uh, at the last show, and I seen New Jack get close to him. I think New Jack got a little nervous being around the G Crew. I know, man. I mean, don't sleep on that G Crew, man. Yeah, I mean, you never know. Like, they could be getting some new members. Like, they're the best... Best mic talkers. I mean, I saw the shirt or the ad for the shirt. I know. I wonder how many shirts they've sold. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I just want to know. Like, I put an offer out to them to come do the podcast, and uh, they never got reached out to me to do the podcast. Yeah, that's kind of sad. I mean, they, they were, I mean, they were the ones that said they wanted to do it, right? Right. They were offended. I believe it was actually, I think I hijacked your post. They said that they were offended that they didn't get to do it, or they hadn't been asked to uh, come on your podcast. And oh. I offered for them to come on my podcast, and well, they didn't ever reach out. So, yeah, I mean, that kind of makes me not want to have them on mine either. I mean, just they say they want to, and they don't. I guess they oh. kind of big timed us. I guess I guess they did big time us. You know, that's kind of kind of hurts. I know, right? Yeah. I mean, who knows? Maybe we'll call them out at the at the next uh, Anna Fight Underground on December seventeenth. Or hey, they might accept the uh, they might accept Billy Stark's open challenge. Hey, you never know. They might. Yeah. I just want to know which member of the G Crew would accept it. That is a question for another day. Do we know how many members of the G Crew there are now? Uh, they keep multiplying every day, so, I mean, it's hard to tell them right now. I'm surprised that, you know, there's not enough members of the G-Crew by now that they don't have their own federation. The GCF? The G-Crew Federation? GCFW? The G-Crew Federation Rest Or uh, GCWF? The G-Crew Wrestling Federation? Or GCCW, G Crew Championship Wrestling. There you go. And yeah. on that note, like I said, thanks for uh, joining us today, Caleb. Make sure you go check out Four Sides Podcast uh, on all your favorite uh, streaming platforms. Uh, make sure you pick up your tickets for Anna Fight Underground's Division, December 17th in Anna, Illinois. Get your tickets at fightundergroundanna.square.site. Get those tickets today before they do sell out. Uh, we appreciate all the love and support of the podcast. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at Big Lee's World. Any questions, comments, concerns, shoot us an email at Big Lee's World at gmail.com. Um, like I said, we appreciate all the love and support. Caleb, once again, thanks for reaching out. Everybody, oh. go check out Anna Fight Underground on IWTV if you missed that last episode. Uh, if you don't have an IWTV subscription, make sure you use the code FUANA for five free days. And uh, like I said, we hope to see everybody out December 17th in Anna, Illinois for Anna Fight Underground the Vision, Big Lee's birthday bash. And uh, thanks for listening. And as always, two scoops of whoop, 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 whoop.